Hey buddy, it's 54 Newstar, and today we're going to begin a new tutorial series into the genre of basically top-down 2D castle defense game using towers to defend your basically your castle from attacking ogres, orcs, and all that stuff. So I have a bunch of Unity uh, 3D files which I'll be uh, basically rendering their walk animations, their attack animations, and all that stuff, and then rendering the towers, and then basically taking those putting them into a tutorial but as usual we're gonna work with a menu so uh, here's our menu we have just one layer though I may switch into um, multiple layers so it has almost a 3d distance effect but for right now this will work for PC mobile um, web and all that stuff so I have our, our sound system set up I have a actually a ghostly track on uh, I have an effect on the text and it, it's kind of basic and I already have it to where you either click on the text or the actual uh, large gigantic huge button which I guess we could shrink for the mobile version but I like it this big um, and then I have our code set up pretty nicely I want to actually improve how I do the coding and how I describe what I do in each coding and so that you guys can see okay exactly what I'm doing so let's get straight to this. This one's going to be a short one, and then our next one's going to get into menu selection, building the first l level. And this is the first series where I actually get out of, you know, Construct 2 and move into a 3D software, maybe, um, called Sculptress, where you actually build a layer or a level and render it from 3D to 2D, and then move it straight into um, Construct 2. So, okay, I just imported a whole bunch of uh, sprite objects, and then I imported a text. So, uh, that's really kind of really simple, and I also used GIMP. Um, all these images are on open game art, and I'll be putting the link down below. These are really, really nice. So if you actually are a part of open game art, just, you know, thumbs up them like crazy, because this guy does really good work, and... He actually put them into multiple different layers, so we could actually use them. So this would be a really good thing for like audio. So if you put like little check boxes, little invisible check boxes, you actually do an audio and disable and enable objects right here. So you could literally just say yes, I want sound on, no, I want sound off, or or something like that. It's really kind of cool. So remember to check this out, and I got a little X right there. So that's kind of cool. Okay, um, so we got our skull, we got our play button. Oh yeah, quick thing on the text. So this is a, insert new object, a uh, text box. Not text box, a regular general text. Then what I did was that his text uh, is, if you want to know what the text is, it's called ultimatum. I have set to regular size 48 and then it's set to white but as you can see I have a glow ghosting effect so we want to say is, is I'm gonna click right on it and go to uh, effects you should already have this in properties something called effects it's in this it's gonna click a plus sign and then you're gonna have a whole bunch of them I just click I just went in for glow and I had glow vertical glow horizontal I click glow horizontal and it came up with this nice little ghosting effect. Now you then can mess around with the blending. Um, but I don't usually mess around with it too much because I like the actual ba uh, basic effect of it. Um, this logo was made in I think Flaming, Te uh, Flaming Text. It's a website. I'll put the link down below. They do a lot of good stuff. Um, there's also another one. I'll put the link down below. Uh, we have sound on, pause the music, and mute or stop the sound. So let's get straight to the code. I'm gonna go over this kind of slow, but you know we don't have too much, so I'm gonna. It may seem a little short. So touch menu controls multi-platform. What does that mean? Well, that means you can use. I can usually I can basically upload this straight uh, instead of building. Um, well, we'll have to actually export a web version and a um, what do you call it? 
a mobile version, but I could also instantly export this to PC. And, but you could always, I think there's those Windows PCs that are touch screens too. You could just load on the regular uh, web or PC version and you don't have to mess around with you know, touch controls are already implemented. You don't have to re-add anything like that. So this is a good way of supporting multi-platform um, setups also on web. If they're t uh, touching it with their fingers on their, you know, their smartphones or whatever, it's already got touch uh, enabled. What you can also do is in a more complex menu, set up an options, disable or enable touch. In case, you know, in case you want to do something really fancy right there. So, on touch Sprite 6, which is that gray uh, bar right here, we are going to go to level selection 2. Go to uh, 2 level selection. Um, or on left mouse button clicked on the same bar, we're going to go to number 2 level selection. Now, here's one thing I should actually mention right here before we get too far into it, is that on your projects, you actually want to lay uh, name every single layout. So we have 1, we have 2, so it's going to be numbered and uh, like it's going to be named in numbers but what you also want to do is you also want to say the name so it's menu level selection then we'll put uh, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4 but they're always going to have a number so it's like menu uh, so it's 1 underscore menu 2 underscore level selection 3 um, level 1 so it, it's very easy to select which ones and you know even on the event sheets you really want to name those two to know which ones they go for and we have our objects and then we have our music okay getting straight back to the code menu music um, on start of layout play unknown place looping volume zero tag music okay why do I put a tag Tag means I can I can just type in that specific that name of the song. Like there's only one song for the menu, so I put menu music. That means I can actually grab that song, only that song, and then I can tell what I want to do with it. Oh, maybe it's too loud during a certain point. Once it I set a trigger for that point, I can say okay, this particular music gets muted or gets lowered in volume and then after a certain amount of time I can then raise the volume back to normal so that's why I put a tag on it volume zero I like the normal um, level of music that the original owner put it at so it's not you know I don't really it's fine with me right there looping because it's just in a loop 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 and we only have one song so it's unknown place zero Okay, uh, a lot of people do preload. What you can actually do is on, um, oh, what do you call it? I guess what you could also do is on start of layout, preload the song and then set it to automatically play. But because it's an AUG file and AUG files aren't too, uh, I found out that AUG files are a little bit easier to play than MP3. Um, and that's just my personal opinion on it, but since we only have one piece of music, I think our game can handle it, and most of these devices can load a good 20, um, I don't know, if you got like 26 minute pieces of music, it's going to load it up pretty fast without any issues. If you got a couple dozen, you may want to preload some before you, and then play them, and then preload others during certain points of the game, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So, on touch of the mute button, or Sprite 7, it's basically an audio icon with no sound um, parts of it. This right here. And let's... There we go. So... Um, let's see. Uh, so, on touch of the mute button, set music to be muted, or you can touch it with your mouse, click on it, it will be muted. On, uh, let's see, did I duplicate, I think I maybe duplicated one. Sprite 7, Sprite 7. Okay, this one, 
It's not supposed to be that, it's supposed to be that. So that one's muted, that one's paused. Okay, I think I did something and I need to fix it. Okay, we'll do this right now. Sorry about this, guys. I thought I already had this fixed. Um, but you can get to see what I usually do. Okay, so that one's paused. Um, actually muted, set muted. And that one's paused. And then what this will do... What, it will, 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 uh, what we'll do here is set this to be unmuted and then unpaused. So we get something like this. You can hear the music. It's muted. It resumes. I pause it. I play. Okay. Um, so again, the double bars is to pause the music, and you can left-click on it, or you can touch it, uh, touch it with on your phone, and then on touch of text, and I'm talking about this text, what we're going to do is stop the menu music. Oh, I don't know why I have two of those. Um... So untouched menu music, or either that or the bar. So you either tap the bar, or you click on the bar, or you tap or click on the text. It's going to send you straight to um, the level selection, which I haven't created yet. That will be in our next tutorial. So let's get straight to the game. So here's our game. Mute it. I can play. I can pause it. I can play it. I can then click on it and we go straight to a white screen which is supposed to be the next level. Okay, and another quick thing is people have been saying how do I edit, you know, exporting it to it, making it larger or whatever. What you want to do is actually click off of everything in this little sky blue area. So go to a, a corner of your, of your um, white area so let's go to a sky blue area, click on that, click on make sure your properties is up, and you're going to get something called effects, so layout properties, effects. Go to under effects, and you're going to get something called effects, view, help. Go to uh, view, and you're going to get like name of game and all that stuff. So this is basically the properties of this, so it's like the core of this. So I have mine set to node webkit, this will be properties, and you're going to see something called about project settings, configuration settings, and under configuration settings, the first one under it is going to be node webkit. Full screen browser is letter scale box, a uh, letter box scale, full screen scaling high quality, um, everything is basically um, up really high on quality settings. Um, so yeah, that's how I have everything set. Um, hopefully you, you know, this answered all the questions on that stuff for creating a simple simple menu. This one's more based on, uh, I, I guess you could say mobile development. I'll have little icons for different actually screens. So over here will probably be options and all that stuff. So you'll have options and probably just an options button. Insert new object, sprite. Uh, which should be either this gear or there's one more. There's another icon or this icon or a wrench. I'll go with the wrench this time. And then there's like a little music icons. I'll put the, the link for these icons because there's a, a mute button actually right here. 
uh, which is a grayed out music symbol, and then this one is like in like full color. So, oh, and this one's really nice for making it like full, so you make it full screen or small screen or whatever. So, but we'll go with um, this year, and I will put it right over here. And that actually should probably go for our next tutorial is options. I don't know what exactly I'm going to put in it. Maybe just there for now and I'll get to it later. Um, I, again, I don't know what I'll put for the options. Um, probably quality settings or something like that. Or, or, you know, just information about the enemies that you'll be facing in Castle Defenders or something about the game. Uh, really don't know about that yet. But again, that's you know, a little extra icon. So yeah, our little mini for our game. And the next one will be basically dealing with maybe an options or, you know, uh, another little screen before you get to the game. And then we'll get to level selection where we're going to have, I think I'll just put like four levels. Um, and then we'll get to actually building each level with the different enemy classes and then the different towers and then upgrading it towers, I think. And, you know, building a basic castle defense and then um, uploading it to uh, Congregate Games and then exporting it to an Android so we can, you know, play around with it, test it, build it, and all that stuff. Again, guys, remember to hit the like button and subscribe button if you'd like to, you know, stay in contact and basically... Uh, because I usually upload stuff pretty regularly, and so you can, like, you know, keep in contact. And there is, speaking of contact, you can email me down below if you would like to have a special tutorial build for, you know, one item. Uh, or if you just have a question and you need an answer, like, as soon as possible, I usually email within a couple hours. Um, also, you can put any questions down below or requests down below or what you would like to see in this tutorial and I'll see if I can do it. Um, again guys, thanks for all the help and all that stuff. We just hit 601 subscribers. That is like really epic and I would like to thank you guys. So I'm going to try to make this tutorial really filled with stuff and really professional and all that. St and all that. Uh, so again, thank you and I will see you in the next Castle Defense tutorial. Bye guys.